Okay, we're recording. Okay, I think let's start it off since we've only got 50 minutes. Um, and I will start it off in our traditional nonprofit commons way. Well, first off, hello, everybody. And I will um, say this in chat too. And this gives us a minute or two while folks kind of um, uh, pop in. But hello, everyone. We usually start. Uh, we have our nor or our usual nonprofit commons meetings on these Fridays, so we're a little later, but you know, great to have everybody here uh, in a special kind of VWBPE edition of it. Um, so usually at our meetings, we start off with introductions. So if you want to type into chat what you are comfortable sharing, so even if it's you know if you don't, that's fine. Uh, but what project or orgs you might be part of, and um, and if you are new to NPC or even want to share like your VWBP highlights so far. You can do that in chat too, but it'd be great to for folks to introduce each other and we'll give it that like a minute. Great. I'm going to pop in a chat here um, and continue kind of on, but you guys can continue to keep introducing yourself as we go. I also encourage you to, um, you know, put in chat and hopefully this will be discussion oriented anyway. So put in chat um, and then even like when we get to the compass points, when we talk for each discussion, you can speak as well. Um, but I also want to let you know that there are notes. We have a Google Doc notes. You can kind of open that or book sort of save that for later and there'll be information in there as well kind of about what we're going and it's a bit of our script as well so um you'll you'll sort of see some of that uh so i want to sort of start off by a little bit just i mean many of you know about nonprofit commons uh but i want to sort of start off with um well first a bit about me and and i did sort of say some in chat but um we'll I'll have just a very short we call it like our little twitter size bio um and uh, uh, 
that I just put mine in. But uh, I'm a designer and a technologist um, and, uh, and then an organizer focused on the convergence of creativity and community, social good in the future. Uh, I'm a founder of the metaverse-focused nonprofit avacon.org um, and vesuviusgroup.com, which is a virtual worlds XR dev studio. I'm also a Singularity University alumni, if any of you know that, in the Silicon Valley area. And um, I put a URL in there that you can kind of find various other things about me. So enough about me. Um, the nonprofit com commons and, uh, comprises of organizations from around the world. Um, and... Uh, uh, many of the folks here are part of the, um, well, actually all the speakers here today are part of the board. Um, uh, and then, so we have a kind of community-led um, organization and it's uh, fiscally sponsored by Avicon, but like community-led otherwise. Um, and I'm putting some more information about NPC in chat. Um, we, we, as I said, we meet, we, uh, meet weekly. We provide tech and education um, uh, an exploration of social good and artistic spaces in virtual worlds. Uh, and um, I'm going to put some info about our weekly meetings, but they're on Fridays, usually at 8.30 a.m. Uh, and we also, like VWBP, we love presenters. So if you're presenting at VWBP and you'd like to present again, or if you have other topics or you have a, uh, an event coming up that you would love our community to kind of come to, or um, a tour of your projects and world, um, please uh, fill out that form and we'll add you to our schedule. So, um, and then more ways to connect with us. Uh, there, we have a website, our Facebook group. Uh, there's also a page, uh, there's a Facebook page and a group so you can actually kind of converse together if you join the group as too. There's a link from that on the Facebook page. Uh, we have a Google calendar where, um, that gets updated and a uh, Discord channel, uh, set of channels that are within the Avicon server. So, um, and today our focus is obviously on a conversation. So we're kind of here for all of you. Uh, and that includes, you know, our NPC members and then all the educators and social good focus folks who might be interested in this. Um, and, uh, uh, like many other community groups, and uh, this is just kind of to set the tone for our particular four compass um, uh, uh, compass points discussion. Uh, like many community groups in Second Life, uh, nonprofit commons or NPC, as we often refer to it, saw a resurgence of people interested um, and interested in and in projects during the pandemic. I'm I'm sure many of you probably have as well. Um, and uh, to today. Um, many of our community leaders were going to lead this discussion about the success stories, mentoring, social good tips, um, and and sort of kind of the changes in thriving and trying to thrive during that period of time as a, as a community. And this, of course, uh, we hope to hear from all of you of what it's been like for you as well. And um, so we invite you to share your thoughts during and um, uh, and that'll be prompted by each discussion. So uh, as we go through each compass point. So I'll do a quick intro of each panelist as we go and then turn it over to them to lead their part and then ask the last questions of all of you. Um, so for our compass points for today, and um, uh, the first one that we'll start off with um, is uh, the East compass point. And I will put that info in here. And uh, Ellie Pinion is leading that conversation for that. Um, Ellie Pinion is a professor, an instructional technologist, a higher ed admin. She is Dr. Becky Adams and as in her, um, in the, uh, the uh, real world or for lack of another word. Uh, recently, she retired from University of New Mexico as the director of online course development and faculty support. Uh, she's, a, as I said, an NPC board member. She also lead, uh, is one of the leaders of the Virtual Worlds Education um, Consortium and uh, on the VWBPE board. So I, I will throw it off with hers with um, kind of focused on what positive changes and accomplishments to strengthen ourselves and community took place in 2021 our East Compass Point. So to you, Ellie. Thank you, Rai. Make sure I'm able to, people are able to hear me with a Y in the text chat. Oh, yep. Great. Thank you, thank you. <clears throat> 
So with this question, I'd like to share nonprofit commons accomplishments while you think about yours. Um, in 2021, MPC has had many amazing tours of communities that are thriving in virtual worlds. We've had speakers that help us think about how we can move forward during challenging times, and it's certainly been that, hasn't it? And support many amazing nonprofits across the metaverse, as well as helping our members to learn machinima to promote their offices and groups. And we implemented a take care of yourself minute at each meeting. We have updated our sim, creating a more visually pleasing, more current look, but also have even more places to get together for conversations, common ground monthly events, as well as other activities. We've partnered with new groups, including support for the new BWEC Eduverse project. And for more information about that, we'll, we will have a session tomorrow afternoon. We all keep saying it has been a challenging time. So please share with us what positive changes you've made, what accomplishments have you had that have helped strengthen you and your community this past year? We're interested in how you manage this. And you can put those in chat, text chat or voice, but we're hoping, like I said, this is like our usual nonprofit comments kind of thing that we encourage contribution. So let's discuss. So how have you rallied? <laughs> okay, Sharkin says more people seem to have begun actively listening. That's an interesting uh, comment, Sharkin. In the physical world and in internet worlds. Lur says, what are you doing? <laughs> Positive changes. She loves active listening. Ray says, being more active here in Second Life has helped me connect new friends. We've experienced that too, Ray. Um, it actually was one of my survival techniques personally, <laughs> as we were kind of hiding and hibernating and protecting ourselves. Lear says, I'm most likely doing and thinking about other tasks as well, um, as she's if she isn't typing in text or talking. Several agree with her. <laughs> Honesty. <laughs> Ava says, I'm putting much more energy into the long-term dreams that involve virtual worlds. Interesting, Ava. Have other people been doing that? That's a great point. Which dreams? Do you mind sharing? Ah, Beth retired last fall. <laughs> Major self-care. Loving retirement. There says, for me, it's the integration of technologies with what people need to feel creative, energized, and on fire. I love the word integration. There's been a lot of talk about that. And that is my field as well, Lyra, as you know, using technology to promote things like creativity. Fiero. <laughs> what are your positive changes and accomplishments? to be strong through last year. <laughs> Lear says, we're pre-coffee, Ellie. Yeah, I agree. <clears throat> but she is so active in our virtual harmony research group. I wonder how much research, more research was done last year. And that to me is very prom promising and uh, extremely, uh, an extreme accomplishment for sure. 
At school, she says, keeping students energized and focused on learning and self-care. It's been a challenging year for teachers, hasn't it? I'm going to share in another um, session about how my students were so much different after two years of this. Wizard says, running my local WOW Women of Wisdom group introduced them to Second Life. Good job, Mary. Thank you. Oh my gosh, that's very exciting. Dancer says, seeing more assistance from telehealth care, also encouraging. There's a lot of things that have been going on this year that are very positive. Zeppelin says, with my statistics lab, I always tried to give my students 10 minutes at the start of class for self-care and they were super thankful. Oh, that's such a great approach. As often Google Met classes are back to back. Yeah. Interesting. Shark and shares. Actually, personally, I took up a challenge from Kevin in a different 3D virtual world environment to come back and see how SL is changing. I did so grudgingly and I'm surprised to find I will stay in SL because I came in contact with the VWEC Eduverse teams. Wow, that's great, Char. Zeppelin says she has no time for, uh, for those who have no time for self-care. That means her students, yes. Cynthia says, I'm delighted how my students work together in Second Life. Real life skills in action. Oh, Zeppelin says, this is the first time teaching this term. Well, you're doing a great job, it sounds like. Ar Arella, who I probably butchered your name, <laughs> says, I always fondly looked at SL as a way to enable us to do desktop just jet setting. I need that coffee too, Lair. Learn about other cultures through interaction and their bills. Excellent. Char says, I will still be in other 3D worlds, um, but she's come here. That's so exciting. Oh, good. Thank you, Arella. Brianna says, at MPC, we have started to incorporate in our weekly meetings a two-minute self-care tip at each meeting to give folks a bit of time for self-care, and that is highly appreciated, I'm going to add. Zeppelin, whereas if there are classes, people often walk between them. Oh, and have a brief pause. Isn't that the case? Marley says, I would like to urge, encourage everyone to think of learning as lifelong and able to happen anywhere and everywhere. For sure, Marley. And Val says, as we're kind of needing to move to our next uh, compass point. Uh, Val says, do you think the buzz around the word metaverse has impacted virtual worlds and your work here? Something definitely to think about. Zeppelin, uh, Lara saying to Zeppelin, creating the feeling of relaxation and joy in classwork is work when there is no break in between term segments agreeing with her. Avis says, helping bridging the Philanthropy, philanthropy, <laughs> 10 dreams into immersive interactive displays. Can see a bit of the idea in the VWBPE exhibit, uh, number 88, inside of the root links realm. May we all become mother trees nourishing. I love it. Thank you all. This is very, very helpful. And, Bri, do you want to sure. come back to you? Yep. Mm -hmm. Thanks for all that. Um, and uh, I do want to also uh, mention there is a little orb next to between near me and um, and Lear and there's sort of some more information on there and I'll remind you that about that later. So on to our West Compass Point, um, which is today, uh, Lear, Lear Lobo is leading that up. She is a professor at Parker University and XR faculty champion, um, futurist, VR, AR, AI, and games researcher uh, at, v at Virtual Harmony on the Mars Expedition. She's an author. She's in uh, and the NPC Education Co-Chair, TCC Hawaii Board a member, OSCC Co-Organizer, um, and there's a link, and I will paste that into paste all of this into chat as well. Um, and with that, Lear, you can take it away for the West Compass Point. Hey, thanks. I was waiting for you. <laughs> Hi, everyone. In, in these quadriviums, we want you to feel comfortable talking and you know, so don't feel voiceless by any means. In the West Compass Point, we always have a, a question uh, to consider. And mine was, uh, what guiding question or topic prompt 
you know, is worrisome or challenging, and and in particular, it is what were the challenges you and your nonprofit or educational community faced in 2021? And you know, our challenges related to what Zeppelin and others have mentioned. You know, uh, we have fast turnaround times. Uh, we have shorter or no breaks between terms, you know, to keep students focused. But the problem is, when do we take a breath and, you know, synthesize and rest, right? <laughs> so students and educators face many pressures, and so do nonprofits. And self-care is important to our well-being. You know, it's hard to learn when you feel overwhelmed, and it's hard to teach and keep everyone energized and on fire. For me personally, you know, my workload accelerated. I, I was teaching for three to four different schools and more than a half time load at, at three of them. So it was like, how many half times or full times can you do? You know? <laughs> and, uh, uh, you know, working from home, you know, is supposed to be easier, but it's really, you, you don't know when you're, you're shutting down and when you're turning it off, right? And so many students needed support and schools needed experienced educators who care and, and uh, and everyone needed something, right? And of course, there's a high state of fear right now. It's not just the pandemic, it's not just the war, it's not just all these other things. Um, it, it's also our, our lifestyle and how we live and how we feel, our culture, right? And so uh, for educators, we grew closer. For me, I noticed I was growing stronger and feeling very comfortable with my community and, and um, very close-knit. You know, and looking at a lot of different tools. And not that technology is a panacea, but that it gives us something to focus on our creativity. It helps to inflame the imagination. And for people like me, you know, I'm not very creative like Zinnia is, where she can just sit down and create art or Rhiannon or others. I have to have some tools to help me make that good looking stuff, you know, look good. <laughs> I can't just do it. Uh, I can't even draw a straight line with a ruler, let's face it, right? And so extended reality, and and that's an umbrella term, as you noticed in the uh, keynote. That's that's everything from virtual worlds where we are right now to virtual reality where we'd be totally immersed, you know, using a, an appliance of some sort to put us in that first-person perspective. But it's also augmented reality, which is everything from, you know, using your smartphone or another device to look through it and augment the experience with virtual content within the real world, right? Uh, you know, giving you additional information that augments your experience to mixed reality, where all of a sudden you see this augmented or virtual content and yourself, you know, in it, or the scene around you, you know, that kind of combination. And that gives you some insights about the technologies you're talking about in class, how things work, and it kind of feeds our inquisitiveness and and excitement. Now I know I'm, I'm, I, I don't really read what everyone else is saying, but I will pause here for a moment and scroll up and take a look. So you know, Beth notes that Second Life's been a lifeline for many of us. And Zeppelin noted that, you know, I, I heard from others who teach or are involved in campuses about the lack of communication of expectations or deadlines in online classes. As often informal conversations take place in class and of course, that includes things like withdrawal deadlines, sign up. Yeah, students don't feel necessarily that same sense of pressure. And yet we have rules and policies that say financial aid gets crossed, you know, if you let people cruise, you know. <laughs> they have to be focused and do things in a timely fashion or, you know, the machine starts to, to complain. And Nam says, um, you know, I think a lot of us who are coaches or work with nonprofits versus edu institutions have created some amazing ways to engage adults in life learning groups and activities and that is so true scrolling up for a moment because i know zeppelin had also said that some of her oh, excuse me zeppelin i don't know male female um, um and i'm not looking around so my apologies but some of my own students were in other countries and classes or labs and would be late at night yeah it would be any Learning ubiquitously, anytime, anywhere, any place, absolutely. And stranger, I'd noted the horror story. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you know, if we never have a time where we can switch off, relax, take a breath, 
get back to green spaces and, you know, to the sense of community that isn't always technology enhanced, you know, how do we blend these kinds of experiences? Now, I noticed definitely students losing family members, you know, that, that exacerbates our fears, right? We're losing people we love. We had one student who lost both parents and a grandmother in just a few weeks at the end of a semester. And it's hard to learn when you're dealing with great loss. And of course, it's depressing, but it's it's debilitating to the spirit, right? And so um, this would be especially challenging, especially to those who are, would not get to have funerals. And that's true. The, the ability to mourn and to say goodbye and to be with people you love, right, who are comforting you and going through the traditions that are part of your culture in your community, that's important to us. Zeppelin noted that one of my students did not submit assignments during the time we were online. You know, and um, and Ellie noted very true, you know, to be in person, you know, to feel that pressure, you know, that, that um, the little pressure we have when the team is counting on you, the class is counting on you, the teacher's looking over your shoulder, the, you know, hey, where's your stuff, you know, <laughs> you know, we're counting on you. You know what I try to do? I try to instill in my classes the, the notion that, you know, um, their work matters. Learning matters and their future matters. And somehow we will get through these really tough times and build a future together, right? I only have a few more thoughts. Keep talking. These are wonderful conversations. Marley adds, if only students and other learners could could um, do their learning in their own timeline. Yeah, I know that would be nice, nice Marley. You know, in one of my schools, uh, our terms are four weeks long, you know, so they have to be so organized, they have to have that book like day one, you know. <laughs> but the good news is they only take one class at a time and they don't have divided attention. And so now we're starting to revisit and say, maybe we need longer terms but then students will have divided attention and take multiple classes. And that's, it's always a question as to which model works best for our students, right? Now, for the nonprofits that I support, because we are interested in nonprofits, not just education, I noticed that they were facing incredible stress from the fact that part of their culture was to gather, right? To meet and to do things out in the wild and that have these face-to-face -face activities and then also to have a reduction in donations so they didn't have the community support that they had enjoyed they also didn't have the financial support and those two pressures you know are very great for any social good agency right zeppelin notes my group was fourth year honors psych students and we're in, in a ton of other classes that's that's right and of course um I always, like I'm asking my students right now, I asked them to participate in a, in a contest that Dancers Yao had, had, had introduced to me from the future of life. And it was on world building AI. And it asked the probing question, what would the world be like in 2045 if you thought of the ideal world? What, how, how would we get there? What would it take to achieve it? It's such a wonderful question. I asked my futuring students to think about it. And, and of course, they're thinking about it, but they're reluctant to put words on paper and to actually think about what would it take to get to where we want to be. Now, despite what comes, when we focus on connecting, learning, caring, we feel stronger and vibrant, you know. And Zeppelin notes that indigenous centers, you know, on campuses, there have been issues with them the feeling of being disenfranchised or disconnected from your communities and also from the community at large. And Marley adds, students could still have flexible teams for different kinds of learning. I'd like to see the whole way education is done have much more attention paid to the needs of well-being of the students. And I agree with you, Marley. That's why I took that tact for this question because if, if we do not feel great about what we're doing and on fire, it's very hard for our learners to catch that same energy. Now, I know we got to move along, so my apologies for clicking. I see Joyce gesture in here, which means it's time for the next compass point. <laughs> yeah, there we go. 
<laughs> thanks, <laughs> thanks, Lear. Um, so, okay, now and 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 thank you for the west. And now we're going to move on to the north compass point, um, and that will be with Zinia uh, today. And uh, Zinia Zaba is an artist, an instructor, a superhero, an advocate for awesomeness, uh, encouraging and empowering active, inclusive education and community uh, participation in the arts and science. Uh, she's co-chair of the Nonprofit Commons Board. She uh, is one of the organizers of VWEC. She is a professor at Peninsula College, and there is a link there for more info. With that, I'll turn it over to you, Zinia. Thank you. Thank you all for being with us today and the tomorrows to come. In the North, we're asking, how did your activities or solutions work to strengthen you and your community in 2021? daisy chain connections and circles these have been our themes to strengthen our bonds within our community the daisy is a symbol of new beginnings and hope our supportive stems demonstrate the importance of how we all win when we work together the circles is a symbol of wholeness infinite energy and inclusivity the nonprofit commons advances forward by focusing on what the community around us wants and needs through these challenging times, we have not been as isolated as others because we focused on supporting each other. The Nonprofit Commons community members link together to make significant connections and build aspiring projects to empower each other and our global partners. Our community members each have unique needs, which gives us perspective and pause. They know to speak up and share at our weekly Friday meetings. No one needs to take center stage to be there to be heard. Everyone is equally important and supported. Yet we do shed a bright spotlight when you are presenting. Our meetings are all in a round to include opportunities to share their experiences, expertise, and activities that we all can learn from. We have events that celebrate our successes in Second Life and beyond the screen. Please visit our exhibit here to help fan the flames of our bonfires. Our weekly meetings are now followed by the Nonprofit Commons Q&A to give helpful and dedicated members an open forum to troubleshoot and tackle the needs of new people in Second Life. I've been hosting a Virtual Worlds Education Consortium cross-community campfire chat following that discussion of positive and inviting aspects of education within a virtual environment. The 4C, as we like to call it, are like professional learning communities and have been focused on even more outreach online, like through social media, to encourage people to join us and why. To meet people where they're at and to demonstrate more support to a wider audience, I want to start hosting the chat at our new Virtual Worlds Consortium, Ed, I have trouble saying this, Edverse, <laughs> Eduverse, Sim, Sim. I hope that you can join us there and do attend our presentation on Saturday to learn more. Because our community members are producing so many amazing events, we do our best to support their efforts and invite people. We don't wanna take away from their efforts. We wanna give them a broader reach. Oh, yay, Val. Excellent. A great example of collaboration efforts is our monthly colored theme common ground networking party hosted by various nonprofit members at our Sims and theirs. I'll be sharing more about this nearly 14 year continuous networking event tomorrow at 11 in the morning. And when I say continuous, I mean, it, it does stop every once in a while. <laughs> Because of our focus on our community, please keep reaching out to us and suggest ways to include you in our supportive daisy chain, which is like a huge group hug circle. So what solutions and events do you want to engage with at NPC? I want to open it up to you guys. What do you want and what do you want to share about the events and solutions we have developed?
So let's see. We have folks saying lots of great things. The informal meetings afterwards, great. Mary Lou wants more of our chair tours, yes. Yes, asking for people to participate in case studies. That's fantastic. And adding other mediums. Excellent. Ah. <laughs> That's great. Thank you. Yes, our spring, non our spring uh, common ground is going to be pink. And as mentioned, it is a way of supporting uh, and highlighting different organizations. So well, that's fantastic. And do you guys find that the nonprofit commons is a space that you can invite new folks so that they can see a bunch of people together? Those green dots are people. Excellent. Yeah. Well, I wanted to be sure that you guys know how much we support what your needs are and your wants. And we also like to celebrate what we have. And we do have such an amazing folk, such an amazing group of folks here. <laughs> Great. We'll get those shots of you. Yeah. Oh, great, Beth. I had the good fortune of finding Nonprofit Commons as one of the first communities that I entered. And it has been a supportive organization throughout. You are circled by a foundation of awesomeness. So let's keep building. Excellent, Marley. Well, see, these are the things that you guys share with us that we learn from. And so still some in skills. <laughs> well, and Zeppelin, see, that's the kind of stuff we need to know about. Thank you. Tori, that's a great question. That's a great question. Yay, Sar. Awesome. Yes, yeah, so we hope that we are creating events and solutions that really develop community. And we learn from you on how you've developed your communities as well. You're all masters of note cards and HUDs. Yes, please. Thank you for coming to the North with me. 
Thanks, Zinnia. That was great. <laughs> uh, I, I, do you have a wall up there? I feel like there should be the wall. Um, uh, <laughs> so, no wall, uh, plenty of sun. <laughs> that's good to know. Um, so, okay. Now we are on to the south. Um, and that will be our with our uh, lovely Buffy. And let me kind of get to my notes so I have that here. Um, so... Uh, there it is. My notes have adjusted over time. So uh, the South is going to be led by Buffy. And Buffy Beale uh, is a futurist, a mega hero, a social innovator. Uh, she started JoinMeJoinUs.org, uh, a global campaign for connecting people and uh, is and be a strong voice for change, or be one strong voice for change. She's a mentor and nonprofit commons board member uh, who believes in virtual world reality. Uh, who believes virtual world reality will connect us in the future in ways we can only imagine now. She is also, it's not in her bio, she is a super volunteer. She helps out so many places for so many events, and we all love her for that. Um, and with that, I will turn it over to you, Buffy. Well, uh, thank you very much. That was um, that was unexpected intro, Rye. Thanks for adding that. So. Um, I join in with my other teammates to say thank you for being here. And I just love what Z said for today and the tomorrows to come. That is, I'm going to remember that one, Z. That was good. So I was given the question, uh, I'm going to get this right here. <laughs> uh, going to make me blush here. Um, so I was given the question of what do you need to make 2022 a great year for your learning and nonprofit community? And I have a little bit of a blurb here for you. So the past few years have been tough, uh, that's to say the least, with the global pandemic prompting many organizations scrambling, I mean scrambling, to set up remote learning and outreach and not to mention Zoom fatigue. But this has resulted in some good things too. For instance, here in Second Life, many former users have returned and reconnected with our community to strengthen these circles. And we've seen that here. I, I've heard of some people saying they came back today. And we certainly noticed greater participation in our, in our weekly meetings here in Second Life at the nonprofit commons. They really uh, are thriving again. Online learning became a central focus point, and finally, as some would say, resources and funding were allocated to bring education delivery into the future. There's good and bad with that rush, but at least people stood up and took notice. With the Facebook announcement of Meta, virtual worlds are mainstream news once again. And as Patch Linden said during his talk with Phelan yesterday, Second Life has had much more attention because of Meta and its claim to the universe. And we can we can debate about that metaverse, whether it always existed, but the good thing is it's now in the news again. We know a virtual presence will play a big part in the future. I certainly believe this. And others are starting to jump on board it's no longer a gamer's world to have an avatar. And looking forward to the upcoming year, online communities have strengthened and people are recognizing the value of this online presence. And now, here it comes. And now it's your turn to share your thoughts and ideas with us. What can you do to keep this momentum going for your organization? And we like to leave this on a, on a positive, happy note. So uh, please do share. What, what are you going to do to keep this going now that we're, many of us here, pioneers, but also new people, we're in this virtual presence and let's keep it going. So over to you, my fellow cohorts. Okay. 
<laughs> Xenia wants more chocolate and pie, and Lear wants to keep the energy going with sharing and caring. Zep, I share this conference with all my academic friends and people I'm on the committees with. Way to go, Zep. And spam my email list and Twitter. Yeah, that's about getting using your social media to get the word out. And Ellie says, yes, keep hanging out with amazing Second Life folks and groups. Very positive. And Zep again, I also forward links to great talks to these people. That's good. Social media, uh, that's really mainstream now and a way to communicate to so many people in such an easy manner. Zep says, I think years ago there was the impression that Second Life was for porn. And that stuck with some. Yes, it did. But uh, hopefully people like us here in this wonderful conference and these wonderful organizations can, can counteract that thinking. Xenia says, I want people to celebrate our dedication we have for each other and our causes. And um, yeah, Zep and famous documentaries. But there's a lot of good things out there now about Second Life. And the chat is going so fast I can't read it, but um, everybody has some really great ideas. And Xenia says she wants to encourage you all to reach out and take um, opportunities to speak to the press. Yes, the more we raise the banners and carry flags and do the rah, rah, rah for virtual world, Second Life and others in general, uh, we can turn around that thinking that it's only for gamers and kids. And um, Shaq says he's going to promote the VWEC Eduverse with every opportunity. That is, that's wonderful. That's a really great initiative. And um, Rai says, I also try to attend conferences that have popped up. So um, Rai, are those conferences uh, virtual conferences or real? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, virtual yeah. conferences, right. So for us here today, participating as a nonprofit commons and, and merging the nonprofit world with the education world, that's another positive think, uh, uh, positive idea. And Marley says, I share a lot of resources so other people can do their work more effectively and creatively. Creatively. Yes, Marley, you are the creative wonder. And Rai says, everyone should be promoting what they do within virtual worlds. Blog, share on your social, apply to present, get the word out. Shaq, plus one for Corin. <laughs> Did I miss something that Corin said? Mr. C, I couldn't miss you. Xe, some of us are gamers in addition to. Yes, that's true, Xe. You had part of probably a leap up for, for navigating an avatar and uh, understanding HUDs and all the lingo that goes on here. And Zep again, I love building town replicas and doing photography as a hobby because I have some fine motor difficulties in real life and love bringing scenes to life. Sometimes it overlaps with my academic self and other times just creative. Way to, way to go, Zep. Um, and his real life friends are hugely into painting and he can show them his digital scenes and photos. That's well done, Zep. I'm, I'm really... Glad you, you've joined us here and uh, participating in this. And he also loves creating replicas of his characters from his children's story with the content in Second Life. And role play is very much a form of creating, writing, and art. That is so true. And it's, I think that's one of the real benefits of Second Life is that you can create a story and be in it. And um, I'm sure everyone here feels as I do when we're in Second Life, we are immersed and we are part of it and we can we can really be part of a story without even thinking about it. We're just part of it. And Rai says, OK, it's time for me to wrap it up. So I want to again thank you very much for for being here with us today. And please do join us at our nonprofit commons meetings every Friday at 830. And um, thank you very much, Rai, for leading us. And <laughs> over and out. Thanks. Uh, just a quick, like, we're in our last minute here. And thank you, Buffy. Um, again, uh, as Buffy said, we want to extend our thanks to the organizers of VWPE. Um, uh, 
the sponsors, uh, the, our wonderful, com my wonderful Compass Points uh, like collaborators around me here, and to all of you for sharing your thoughts and future plans so generously. Uh, as um, uh, Buffy was also kind of uh, reminding us all, Again, Fridays we meet weekly, uh, except for holidays, uh, occasional things like that. Uh, so Friday, 8.30 a.m., join us at Nonprofit Common. Uh, Lear is putting in like our upcoming schedule, which is fantastic. We love presenters. Come share with us. Represent your VWBPE presentation. Tour, take us on a tour of your work, uh, your social org, uh, your project, whatever. Uh, we also offer free virtual office space for those uh, that are doing nonprofit social good work, cause-based stuff. This does also include educators, librarians, artists, activist groups, you know, um, things like that, uh, support groups. There's a link to the form there. Um, I will give a few more links um, in here uh, of ways to connect with us um, again. So um, our site, the Facebook our calendar that lists the things um, and uh, the NPC Discord channel that's within the Avacon server. Links to the notes where all this stuff is. I will put the transcript in here afterwards. Um, and uh, for those, of course, moving on, enjoy VWBPE 22 conference and the inspirational sessions that are going to keep happening. Make sure to attend as many as you can, um, including one from there are many nonprofit commons community members at large that are presenting. If you click the little orb that's next to me, the little 360 orb here, you will get um, a, a note card and a bunch of other stuff that has a list of those. Um, there's a good uh quite a few i it's also the list is on the dock um i can paste in some but um for sure we will um you know it will it will kind of run over but um uh i will kind of continue to paste that day by day in here and uh thank you again everybody um and we made it with only two minutes over so fantastic um i love you all nonprofit commons loves you too we hope to see you on another future friday um Thank you, everybody. And thank you, Lear and Buffy and Zinnia and Ellie. And James for recording us. Thank you, too, James. <laughs> sure. Glad to. Uh, yep. And, and we encourage people too. There are many offices, as we said, wander around them, come to visit nonprofit commons and see all the various orgs and educators. We have a lovely library that Val can tell you all about. And we'll talk about CVL, I'm sure at other sessions, but come explore too. Okay. So that's it. I think, uh, look at the schedule. If you want to see whatever is coming up next, I paint pasted some stuff in of us, but I will give a link again to the main overall VWBPE schedule, and I think they're going to put it in chat too, in the group chat. If you're not part of the VWBPE conference groups, um, they're putting those in of what's coming up next. So um, there will be a pre show in Rockcliffe. Um, so, and uh, yeah, more things to come today. <laughs>